All right, joining me now is Congresswoman Jackie Spear of California. She is a member of the House Intelligence Committee. She's got a busy week ahead of her starting on Monday. Thank you for being with us. Let me just get uh, your thoughts on, on, on what you and your committee plan to do if indeed uh, the DOJ does not present any evidence. The deadline uh, was yesterday. They asked for an extension. You guys gave until Monday. If they don't come forward with anything saying, here it is, here's how we know that, you know, President Obama, they say the president says wiretapped his phones, uh, do you plan to subpoena any evidence? I think there's no question that we would subpoena any evidence. But, Poppy, what's really important to point out here is that you cannot wiretap a U.S. person without going to a judge and showing probable cause that there has been illicit activity engaged in. And there would be a paper trail of that somewhere, something very easily to pull out of the, a file and give to the Intelligence Committee. This, you know, we have been following uh, Mr. Trump's uh, tweet down a rabbit hole because meanwhile he is dismantling many of the programs in the federal government that are critical to people's lives. So we're going to get we're going to get to that in a moment and we're going to get to your take on the CBO score of the uh, health care replacement plan. But I just wonder what the what the long term play is here. So let's say you subpoena that whether or not you get anything then where do you go from here because this is a president who has presented things without any factual basis and it has not hurt him. For example questioning, uh, you know, where the former president was born, uh, questioning wanting to see his birth certificate for years, for he still got elected. Then his claim of voter fraud, that three to five million Americans voted, uh, people voted fraudulently in the last election. Again, no evidence presented. So if you don't get any, any evidence on this one, what's the long-term play? Where are your teeth in this? Well, long-term play is that we will call upon the president to recant and to apologize to former President Obama. I mean, you do not make those kinds of allegations, criminal allegations, against a former president uh, as he did so recklessly. And it's that reckless behavior that the American people are going to start to wonder whether or not he is capable of doing the job. And you think you get uh, President Trump to do that? Well, I think the Congress, uh, at least some of the members of Congress, certainly the Democrats in Congress, will take action calling on him uh, to recant and to apologize. Okay. I want to get your take on this. So the CBO has come out. They've scored this health care plan. Uh, Mick Mulvaney, you just heard head of OMB, just took issue with the use of the word damage control. He says Republicans are not on damage control. He said the CBO got it totally wrong. Um, he, you know, the argument here is Trump came out and said it's a, quote, big that beautiful negotiation, so there, there's room to, to give here, he's making clear. Here's how Paul Ryan put it. Two is Tom Price at HHS brings more choice and competition, lets the states open up markets, which will lower prices even more. In part three are the other bills that we will be passing, interstate shopping across state lines, association health care plans to let people bulk buy insurance nationwide, medical liability reform. Those will drop premiums even further and make health care even more accessible. So the Republicans argument, uh, Congresswoman, is that this is part one of a three part plan. Is it too soon for Democrats to call this and look at this like a win? It's dead on arrival. This bill is not going to pass the Senate for sure and maybe not even the House. All the American people need to understand is that doctors and health care providers and the AARP are all opposed to it. The only people who are supporting it are some insurers and those persons making over $450,000 a year. This is a, an effort by the administration to really take away health insurance from the 20 million Americans that now have it that didn't have it before. So, so what they say, Congresswoman, is that you know, it is them trying to make health care more affordable. I get the argument. Look, you would see 10 to 15, 14 million people, you know, off of the Medicaid that they rely on now. I get that. But it this also be people, because the mandate would go away, that are opting not to buy it. I know some folks who would opt not to buy it. Here's the thing. The health care plan as it stands now, Obamacare has meant spiking premiums across the country as high as 116 percent in Arizona. It's also meant that Humana has dropped off. Aetna not only dropped off, but called it a death spiral. What is, what is Democrats' plan to fix the existing system? What well, do you have, think needs to change with what exists in America that is not perfect? 
After Obamacare passed, we recognized that it needed to be fine-tuned. There were amendments that we were seeking to put into the bill. The Rep Republicans were totally resistant to that. When Medicare was passed, it wasn't perfect right out of the box. It was, in fact, amended many times. So there are many things we have to do. Cost containment is the most crucial element that has to be fixed in the Affordable Care Act. And we have many measures to do that. Look, that's a long discussion, but you do, it's harder and harder to do that when you have more and more of the big providers dropping out uh, because the math isn't, isn't working for them. Congresswoman, come back on New Day. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.